fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in New York City here in Central Park. And today what we have for you are the don'ts of riding the subway here in New York. Because there's some subway etiquette you should know as a traveler, so you can have a better experience when you're here in New York. Because you know what? The subway is a vital part of your visit to New York to get out to different parts. You want to head out to Brooklyn and check out some stuff there. You want to go out to the airport. You want to be just going around town, maybe not walking 20 miles a day. Yeah, the subway can help you out, but there's definitely some don'ts you should know and I think we're just gonna start with this one don't not take the subway I know a lot of people get scared they're like New York's a big city and it's all dangerous and the subway I'm gonna get disappeared if I go on there look it's not that bad you will use it it's helpful it goes all over the place so don't be afraid to use the subway when you're here because it will totally change your trip okay because it will make it so much easier to see so many more things when you are here all right now that you know that you're gonna take the subway when you're here let's get to the actual don'ts of actually riding the subway and I think the first don't really don't don't starts when we're actually getting ready to go through the turnstiles and that is don't walk up to the turnstile and then look for your metro card or your ticket you know to get onto the metro because you're gonna stop the line and people are like dude come on let's go so figure out your metro card before you walk up to the turnstile or if you have your phone you can just use your phone to tap in have that ready to go so you just tap and go so you just head through the turnstile instead of having people like bunch up behind you or somebody coming from the other side trying to come out of the subway going through the same way all right so that's the first thing you need to realize because that will irk some of the locals when you're here and the second don't I have for you is once you get through the turnstile don't stop right past the turnstile to figure out which train do I need to take where do I need to go move go through step through a little bit and get on the side if you're not sure which train you need to grab or where you need to go to get the right train for you because then you have more people blocking the way and that's another thing is you don't block people on the subway whether they're going places you don't want to hold people up because what you don't realize is if someone misses their train it might mean the difference between getting home at six o'clock or seven o'clock at night because it can be a really big difference with the express trains and making connections and all kinds of stuff that's why you'll notice that people have less patience when they're going to get on the subway here than you know other places around town and that don't blocking thing really is really important on the escalators and I gotta tell you this don't stand on the left of the escalators on the subway because that's where people walk down or more likely run down to catch their train if you've got your stuff stand on the right side not the left all right this is one thing I see people get irked about with the tourists to have their bags or there's kind of all together as a group we're gonna have our five people just clumped up in the escalator so nobody can get by and you will hear people saying hey get out of the way like that is one thing that will irk the people here so don't do that another thing that might be an important don't to know is don't try to get on the train before everyone else has gotten off of the train this is a thing I've seen in some other countries around the world where every try that everybody tries to get on and off at the same time and it's just a disaster step to the side let the people get out and then go in that is a common courtesy and it's how you ride the subway here so let the people get off and when you're on the train there are some certain don'ts you need to remember when you're on the train number one don't don't make eye contact look they're not your friend they don't want to get to know you don't stare into their eyes because that can get a little weird on the subway all right another thing is don't make conversation they don't want to talk to you especially if they're here you know they have their earbuds in they don't want to talk okay and you may think well New Yorkers are so mean they're not they don't even say hi on the subway no they don't so don't talk to people on the subway all right it's it's kind of a kind of a faux pas to do if you are here and when you're sitting there don't think that the seat next to you is meant for your backpack or your bag that's meant for someone else to sit there put your stuff in front of you when you're on the train if you if you get a place to sit because that's the right way to do things and also don't man spread you know when guys like open their legs really wide when they sit there and it's like they take up three seats for their legs you, you we all know you don't need that much man spreading space all right so just be respectful keep your stuff in front of you and also if you've got a backpack don't wear your backpack in the subway one I mean in case there's pickpockets which there's not really a lot here so it's not really something to worry about but also it's so you don't knock into people so don't forget to take off your backpack and hold it in front of you when you're on the train okay now another don't when you're in the train is you don't want to block the doors okay because you don't know when people are coming in going out and if you're just standing there like in front of the doors duh, 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 what am I in the way one well, you look like a fool but also you're gonna get knocked into so just stand to the side and if your stop isn't for like 10 more stops you don't have to be right near the door you can go in farther it'll be okay the subway isn't packed every single second of the day all right now when you're on the platform I have a few don'ts for that as well okay so when the trains coming on I got to tell you this don't get on the empty subway car 
because there's a reason why it's empty and it's usually not a good reason all right so if you notice that's full that's full wow there's nobody there i'm gonna walk down to this one don't don't go to the empty car go to the other ones all right if you're looking to find the conductor on the train don't forget to look up and look for the zebra stripe because the zebra stripe on the kind of subway platform that's where this the conductor actually stops their train so if you want to go ask some questions or if it's in the evening you want to feel a bit safer you can sit in the car where the conductor is because that can be a bit safer that's something to look for so don't forget about that zebra stripe up there um also i guess going with the emptiness i forgot to mention this if there is a, a full car but there's like some empty seats on the far side wow it's packed there's two seats i'm gonna go over there i'm gonna tell you right now don't get in the empty seats at the full car because there's again probably a reason why it's empty and it's probably not good all right now when you are looking for the subway when you're going around the city one thing i gotta tell you is don't think that every entrance to the subway will get you onto the platform you want to go on make sure you look and see is it a downtown train or an uptown train because it might be different sides and if you're not sure what downtown is downtown is going south so think going down south so you're going down if you're here in, in central park going downtown is going to you know the world trade center the 9 11 memorial going down that way okay and if you're going uptown you're going north towards central park all right to give you an idea and sometimes the bigger stations you can get to both sides no problem but some of the smaller ones it's only one side or the other and especially if you're going out you know you're in Brooklyn or other places you might need to make sure you get on the correct side so make sure you know that you have the right entrance when you go there and it'll say these are uptown trains or these are downtown trains or this is the ones that go to Brooklyn they do have good signage to tell you what's there so when you're looking for your trains I want to tell you this don't don't think that it's the colors that matter on the train lines it's the numbers and letters because the thing you'll see is like wait all these same numbers and letters are going on the same color it's going the same place yeah it does for a time and then it splits off okay and depending where you want to get off it could be very different depending on the train you're taking so make sure you pay attention to the letter or the number of the train that you need to take. That's why if you're gonna go someplace, they'll tell you the letter or number. They're not gonna say, take the blue line. No, they'll say, take this number or this letter, right? And so you wanna be aware of that so you're not blindly just following because, oh, it's a red line, it's a red dot, I'll go there. No, 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 no. Make sure you have the right one, okay? Also, don't confuse a local train with an express train. So the express trains, they don't stop at every stop. They stop you know, every five or six stops, whereas the local literally stops every single stop. And the thing is, sometimes you have to take the local to get to certain spots. But if you've got a long way to go, I highly recommend maybe you wait till the express, which is the next train, and so taking the first one just because it's local and it's there, okay? Your, your strategy in taking the subway here is very important for saving yourself time because that can be a significant time difference taking an express versus a local. Now, when you're heading down to the Metro, I think another thing to mention is you don't see it as much anymore, but don't buy a Metro card from anyone else except for the kiosk that's there or if there's an attendant where you can buy it from, those are the places you're gonna buy it. You don't buy it from some random guy saying, hey, you wanna buy my Metro card? You don't do that because who knows how many swipes are still on there or, or taps are still on there. Actually, your best bet is if you have a smartphone, you can just tap yourself in and tap yourself out with that or one of those like, you know, tap credit cards. You can use that as your, um, as your ticket and what's cool if you're here for a while they actually have the system set up that you know after your 12th tap you know they make it into an unlimited like week card you're like oh that's kind of cool but I mean, it's only from like monday to sunday but it's something that can be helpful to save you some money and you're not worried about should i get the week pass or do i get date or do i just buy as i go just tap in with your phone or on this it has to be the same phone and the same credit card that can really help you out, all right? Now, another thing I wanna tell you is don't like retap like 10 times because sometimes they will block you out. So do be aware of that because they're trying to make sure people aren't trying to get multiple people on the same kind of pass. So do be aware of that. Another thing I gotta tell you is don't expect to understand the PA system. I mean, sometimes I understood a few things they said and sometimes I had no idea what was going on. So just be aware of that. And what's cool, in some of the trains you'll actually see, it'll tell you what the next stop is so that can make it easier for you to know hey when do I need to kind of move toward the door or when should I be getting ready to go out and what I do like here is they actually leave the doors open a bit longer than some of the other cities I've been to and oh yeah don't worry you don't open the door the doors open automatically and they close automatically so that might be one of the things you're like how do I get out how do I get out it's like no they just haven't opened the doors yet man you'll, you'll be fine that happened to me I was at World Trade Center yesterday and these people were like trying to figure out how to open the door I'm like dude that they open automatically we just got to wait till they actually like 
unlock them. They're like, oh, okay. So something to kind of think about. Now for my fellow travelers flying in or flying out of New York City and you're gonna be going from you know LaGuardia or JFK, I gotta tell you, don't expect the subway to get you there in one go. It's not like there's a direct subway that'll take you right to JFK or right to LaGuardia. You're probably gonna have to transfer. I know with LaGuardia you take the subway out, which is nice, there's one subway you can take out to it. And then you gotta switch to a bus, it's like 10 minutes to do it. So that's one of those things. And if you have a lot of luggage, I gotta tell you this, don't use the subway if you've got a lot of luggage, okay? It can be a bit much. I mean, if you have one kind of big suitcase, it's okay in a backpack, but it can be a bit tough because another thing I gotta tell you is don't expect the subways here to be super handicap accessible. Um, and they, I mean, they'll have elevators and stuff, but it's not super like, I would say if you have limited mobility, it can be kind of tough with all the steps and everything. And as I said, with the escalators, there's also not a lot of escalators all the time, okay? So there's a lot of steps, so do be ready for that. And you might need to give yourself more time if you have difficulty with steps. Now I have kind of a serious don't when you are on the train. Um, I'm gonna tell you this. Don't mess with the people that are seriously intoxicated because you will see people that are passed out on the train. You'll see people that are passed out on the subway steps. You'll see maybe body parts of people occasionally. I mean, that does occasionally happen. It's not all the time, but don't interact with them, you know, and I would recommend not sitting right next to them if they're passed out there, you know, uh, on the train. I would find another place to sit or stand in another part of the train because I was on the train yesterday and some people were like, oh, I'll just sit next to them and get their pictures with them. I'm like, that's not really a good idea. All right, so just have a heads up for it. Um, but honestly, using the subway here in New York City is gonna make your trip so much better. I know for me, looking at my steps, my usual uh, walking was 25,000 steps a day when I'm just walking around Midtown. Yesterday, I, I'm staying in Midtown. I went down to the Oculus and the World Trade Center, Statue of Liberty, and then I went over to Brooklyn and all this stuff. And and I only did 10,000 steps. So it's a lot less walking if you use that and therefore your feet aren't killing you from all the traveling and all the walking. So please use the public transportation when you're here in New York City. The subway is fantastic. Is it super clean? No, but is it super efficient and effective for a tourist? Yes, and that's what we're here to do. Get as much as we can out of this awesome city. So I hope this helps you know a bit more of how to use the subway here in New York City, but also some of the do's and don'ts of doing it because it can make a big difference in your trip. Bye from here in New York City.